In this video, we're going to talk about from a small tailoring stores to 1,000 stores worldwide. Success story of Uniqlo, Japanese fast fashion. So before starting this video, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. If you were to mention the brand Uniqlo to anyone outside of the Japan 10 years ago, they would have given you a bewildered look. If you were to mention the name Uniqlo to any citizen of the world in the present day, they would immediately think of quality, affordable and fashionable clothing. That's the level of success that Uniqlo has reached over the past few years. It has emerged as a new rival in the competitive retail industry for quick fashion around the world. In spite of the fact that it must contend with much larger companies and industries such as Zara, that is, and Ditex, H&M, Gap and Forever 21, Uniqlo has still been able to expand at an incredible rate. How was it able to win a portion of the very competitive retail industry for fast fashion in such a short amount of time? The unyielding dedication of Uniqlo to innovation and the company culture it fosters are among the primary reasons for the success of the brand. The Japanese businessman, Tadashi Yanai, who established the corporation is famed for saying, without a soul, company is nothing. This soul is mirrored in the 23 management principles that Tadashi and I has designed and implanted in each and every one of Uniqlo's workers. Citation needed, putting the needs of one's clients before those of one's own business and making a positive contribution to one's community are the heart of these guiding principles. The History of the Uniqlo Brand Oguri Shuji was a chain of the 22 men's tailoring establishments that the Dashi Yana inherited from his father in 1972. The chain was located in Yubi Yamaguchi. Shortly after becoming company president in 1984, he created a new store in Hiroshima, Unique Clothing Warehouse, which was ultimately shortened to Uniqlo. It's well knowledge that his promotion served as the impetus for the exponential growth of the corporation. The Dashi Yana was inspired by his travels to Europe and the United States where he discovered large casual apparel chains such as Benetton and Gap. Tadashi Yani saw immense potential for Japan's casual wear market and set goals to evolve the family's business strategy from suiting to casual clothing, buying fashion goods in bulk at a low cost. He also saw immense potential for Japan's casual wear market. Tadashi Yani also found out that a lot of the overseas fashion chains were vertically integrated, which meant that they controlled every step of the company process, from product creation to manufacturing to retailing. By 1998, he had opened more than 300 Uniqlo stores around the country of Japan with great success. However, one of the primary problems that needed to be overcome was the consumer's view of the brand. It was thought that the company was a bargain retailer that sold low quality and inexpensive clothing to the suburbs. This attitude dramatically shifted when the brand released the Global Quality Declaration in 2004, a woe to stop manufacturing low-priced items of poor quality. Since then, the perception has been radically different. Since that time, people have begun to recognize Uniqlo for the superior quality of their fleece jackets. The public's impression of the brand changed very immediately, going from one of being inexpensive and of poor quality to one of being affordable and of good quality. Uniqlo is now a wholly owned subsidiary of Fast Retailing Company Limited, and it's well known for selling private label casual wear of a high quality at affordable rates. In addition, Uniqlo is noted for its innovative designs. In just a matter of 22 years, the company has expanded to more than 2,250 locations in 25 countries across Asia, Europe and the United States as of the month of September 2019. It has more than 800 retail locations in Japan alone, making it the largest clothing chain in all of Asia. The current market valuation of fast retailing is greater than 49.2 billion USD and the company employs more than 56,000 people across the world. Fast Retailing reported a profit of 2.5 billion USD. 
and revenues of 22 billion USD for the fiscal year that ended in the year 2020. It's estimated that one in every four people living in the company's native country of Japan owns a down jacket from Uniqlo, which contributed 38% of the company's total income. The past five years have seen phenomenal growth for the fast retailing, and the company's optimism is reflected in its revenue prediction of 9.5% increase for FY 2021. Uniqlo is ranked 84th on the list of the world's most valuable brands by the worldwide management magazine Forbes. The company's brand value is estimated to be 9.2 billion United States dollars. A significant portion of this success may be attributed to the founder's commitment to invention and the culture's intense focus on satisfying customers. With a primary focus on growth in the United States, China and online, Uniqlo aspires to become the largest mass apparel shop in the world. It is steadily making progress toward the global fashion giant H&M's market share, which is expected to reach 24.3 billion USD in the revenues in 2019. If Uniqlo is successful in achieving this lofty goal, the company will unseat and die tax as the industry leader in global apparel and take the throne from the Zara's parent company. The following is a list of some of the primary contributors to the success of the Uniqlo brand. Delivery system that backs up a crystal clear brand promise. The two biggest challenges for any brand are to define a crystal clear brand promise and to effectively deliver on that promise consistently across all touch points of the customer experience journey. Delivery system back up a crystal clear brand promise. Successful brands are those that develop supportive organizational and operational structures that make it easier to implement strategies to deliver on the brand promise. These structures can also be thought of as supportive organizational and operational structures. On the one hand, Uniqlo has in fact been able to successfully define a distinct brand promise for itself, which is to provide high-quality, performance-enhanced, universal, basic casual wear at costs that are affordable. On the other hand, it has also established a robust distribution network in order to keep this brand promise. Because the company is capable of product planning, design, manufacturing, and distribution on its own, it is in a position to stay close to customer needs based on what customers are buying in their stores. This enables the company to save money by avoiding overproduction or unnecessary overhead costs. In a matter of days or weeks, stocks can be updated or resupplied depending on which option is chosen. Uniqlo is able to combine its fabric buys into massive orders because it focuses on core products in a narrow variety of textiles. This gives it better negotiation leverage against suppliers, which translates into cheaper costs for its customers, which satisfies its brand promise. Tadashi Yanai, the CEO of Uniqlo, is fond of arguing that the company is more of a technology company than a fashion company because of its product development strategy and its efficient supply chain. In point of fact, the method that the brand uses to manufacture apparel has more in common with the iterative approach to product development that's popular in the technology industry. This is in contrast to cyclical and trend-driven rhythm that's typical of the retail industry for fast fashion. While Uniqlo's leading competitor Zara has built the world's largest apparel business on the basis of rapidly responding to the fast-changing fashion trends and getting items from factory to stores in approximately two weeks. Uniqlo takes the exact opposite approach and plans production of its wardrobe essentials up to a year in advance. This allows Uniqlo to provide customers with a greater selection of high-quality, on-trend pieces at lower prices. Uniqlo, on the other hand, focuses on making a few designs of urban practical basics, as opposed to its competitors, who sell a vast selection of on-trend clothing that's influenced by catwalks all over the world. In addition to this, the organization maintains a very reliable supply network. The marketing department develops a comprehensive marketing strategy for each season, allowing the marketing department to adjust production by style to line with demand well in advance. 
merchandisers are able to use this information to make production adjustments approximately one year before to the introduction of a product concept meetings consist of all the major product creation teams are held once a garment is in the production about 400 professional staff members will visit the production centers to check on the quality and handle any issues that have arisen what do you think about this video do let us know down in the comment section below if you have enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go